Hello, hello. This is Greg Peliquin, a.k.a. G. Pelly. And this is Caleb Myers filling in for Evan Arkin. Looks like we have the finals of our FNM here, and this represents the traditional clash of Celestia versus Rakdos, and it's, it's been tearing up the, uh, the Grand Prix circuit and Star City circuit as of late. Absolutely. Yeah, we have uh, Ryan Chapman here on the uh, green-white aggro. We've seen Ryan a couple times on camera, if you're familiar with her videos. Yeah, and it uh, looks like we have Michael Coleman playing black-red aggro. Uh, looks like we got the fairly similar Joseph's deck we, we, we saw, if you, if you watched our, our previous one. Um, but as, as black-red aggro deck, we have 11 one-drops, actually, only three Rakdos calculators. And it looks like we have um, some Falcon Wrath Aristocrats and some Hellriders. Yep. And serving a bunch of two-drop removal spells. Yeah, and a couple of Sign in Bloods. And a couple of Dreadbore main deck. That's curious. Not necessarily saying it's wrong, but it's interesting. And we have Cavernous Souls as well. So four Cavernous Souls to get around the, the counter spells of the flash decks. So yeah. Ryan runs, rolls a big four when Sign goes first. And that looks looking at it like a ten. Yeah. So it looks like Mike will go first. Um, Out of Ryan's deck, we have Dried Militants, Pilgrims, Arbiter Elves, Thalia, Strangler Root Geist, Luxon, Smiter, Silverblade Paladin, Sublime Archangel, Wolfield Silverheart, and Sagarda, along now, with uh, some Rancors. Now, it's an interesting point. Uh, looks like Ryan wrote just plain Thalia instead of Thalia, whatever her name is. Yeah. And Guardian of Thraben, is that right? Yeah. And and Sagarda instead of Sagarda, Host of Herons. Now, that's actually fun because in this format, uh, now what's interesting is in a more competitive format when you're filling out deck lists, if you were like Emrakul, you will get a game loss most of the time because it could be Emrakul's Hatcher. However, there's no other Sigarda or Thalia that I can think of in this format, so it's acceptable. Right. All right, so that minor aside, looks like uh, Ryan has an awkward hand here of some, uh, oh no, there, there's a there's a Sun Petal Grove there. So you got Cavernous Souls, Sun Petal Grove, okay. So Michael's off to the races first. They both keep their seven, and we have a turn one uh, Blood Crypt ping for two and a Grave Crawler to start. All mm. right, so Ryan is going to play uh, Humans, probably. Yep, yep. and that, that is a turn one Pilgrim. Now, if she doesn't draw another land, this Pilgrim could be a little odd. Yeah, well, you want to hit like a, a Forest or Temple Garden or something, so we can get that turn two Smiter into play. Watch Ryan quickly, uh, obviously, blocks there. It goes to uh, yeah. 18, and there's another Diagraph Ghoul. And wow. another one. So it's Michael like Coleman off to a quick start. Well, that's what that's what playing all those all those one drops is good for. That nope. uh, that that should be tapped. That is coming into play tapped. That should absolutely be tapped. Well, let's hope yeah. the players catch this. Looks like they don't. Hopefully they hope oh, that's a pretty big deal. Yeah, that, that's, that's a that's, huge deal. Yeah, you, that should not be in play. And neither of them noticed that. Wow. wow. Well, yeah, that that's okay. a big big deal. From two players that play fairly regularly, that is. A yeah. huge deal here. Here's the kill gate. So now, yeah. now, now notice how Mike, Michael cannot dreadbore here because that's a cavern in play. We can't. Uh, um, I, don't, I don't think you can move this miner right away. But what, 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 what he has in play, um, you can you can run some grape colors into it and searing spear, which is, actually I'd probably do. Yeah. If, if he's got so yep. just just telegraph searing spear. I can't see his hand from here, but this looks like a searing spear or, or a pillar. Ryan snap blocks and here's with here's the end of the spear. Almost. For, I guess you can even if you don't have spear, I guess you can just cast it. But that's a spear. Oh no! Nope. What are we doing here? We're we debating spearing. We do definitely be spearing here. Okay. Yeah, it's just free two damage. I guess that's reasonable. Does he have well. the pillar as well? Nope. Another one drop. Wow. Okay. From a, a judge's perspective, if you got called over to this game, say now, mm -hmm. and the players realized that that land shouldn't have come to play untapped, what would be your ruling? Should there be a game error? That'd be a, a warning or a caution at this level. And since it's been a full turn cycle, the Luxone Smiter would stay in play. Absolutely. Yep. Um, yep. And then caution the players to be more be more mindful of what their lands do. So okay, so looks like Rand's tapping three here. Where we cast Silver Blade Paladin. Yep. So uh, okay, pairing it to the Smiter, I would assume. Yep. And so do, do, we, do we attack or not? I, uh, we are casting a military. military. So I think we can attack. Now here. I think an attack is oh, all right. I'm okay with attacking yeah, attack the Smiter here. Now you have a couple blockers. And in we go. I don't think we're going to block here, are we? Well, the Diagraph Ghoul, it depends what's in Michael's hand. The Diagraph Ghoul isn't doing too much because it can't really swing back profitably and it right. stops 8 damage here. So we're going to prevent yeah. 8. And the Ghoul finds himself in the graveyard. He still doesn't have good attacks though because he's got to cut the 
Still worried about Paladin staring him down. Now a removal spell on the Paladin would be pretty good. And then you could get some you could get some good beats in. Or even a removal smell on the Loxodon Smiter. Yeah. So let's say Simon Blood. That's not what you want to be doing here. He doesn't really have you don't I don't think you have time for that here. Well, if he doesn't have a removal spell or a good play. So we draw a messenger here. Now, I would think if Michael had his Tearing Spear there or a removal spell, he would have just used it last turn. Absolutely. So he, he won't, he can't, there's no removal spell in his deck he can play now except for a Mountain Tearing Spear, which I don't think he has. We would release a Messenger off of the Simon Blood, so we saw that. So I don't, looks like Michael's pretty far behind from the, just because of the elephant that should, that should not have, the, the elephant in the room that should not be in the room, or at least just coming, just entering the room. Yeah, and it, a huge difference that makes being played one turn earlier. Yeah. Because Michael would have gotten in for a much larger amount of damage. The Paladin would have had to come down a turn later. Yeah, so Michael now, hands in his lap, they're just like looking like... That, 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 now, I read that as, as, as a tell of not having of being weak. Yeah, when your hand drops to the ground. When, 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 when you're like twiddling your thumbs like that, that looks like, oh, oh wow, that's a Rogue's Passage. And we have mana activates. activate, so we can get in for 8 this turn and 8 next turn, and end matters quickly. I see. I also see another spider, a wolf, your silver heart, and a sublime. sublime so Ryan has some options, and what looks like, um, uh, what do we do? What are we gonna do here? I'm a big fan. I think we're gonna. I would say, let's see. I don't mind sublime archangel because uh, with the exalted triggers next turn, you could just kill him with a. Um, I also like I also like running out just silver heart here, pairing it with a militant, and then bashing in with both of your creatures. You can't. You can only block one of them. It's a terrible block at that. You could send even send in the silver blade paladin as well. No, that's what I'm saying. Play, play silver. Play the silver heart on militant, and then send in the, send in the two there green is, creatures. There is one problem with that plan. In the oh, yeah, we don't have two green. We don't have two green. Yeah, so we can't cast that. Okay, that's correct. So probably we're saying, yep, I like this play, and that's probably fine. I like that too. Bringing the militant's good. Because if he blocks the militant, he goes to four and he just dies to Rogue's Passage. Yeah. Next turn. So he's blocking probably that. So he's going to 12 here. So yeah, the militant would be a good play there. I, I like bringing the militant. And then I like sending the militant in there too. And then I guess it won't matter too much because you're going to have Archangel plus Rogue's Passage anyway. Yeah. So that's five. What are we doing here? Or oh, we're pumping everybody. Probably before damage, five. That's fine. That's okay. Just take six off this, goes to ten. Some moment counters and everybody. Here we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Six, ten. And then, yeah, so, so the spider's still lethal here. And Someone with uh, the, the sneezes there. With no creatures that block. It seems highly yeah. unlikely that Michael Coleman gets out of this hole. We we uh we need Dreadbor for Spider and we need it right now and even then you don't, it's not good enough because you you're those grave callers can't block so I, I think I think you're just dead we're just dead here not yeah that's not gonna do it takes takes uh Ryan four but oh no four sorry at sixteen takes you at ten not even close so Ryan takes the first game uh, as soon as they do the math here yeah. Coleman attacking. Needing the aristocrat back. Not relevant at all. You could just take it if you're Ryan. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter. Actually, it doesn't matter what you do. If you're Ryan, you can block, not block, because Rogue's Passage is going to make this a done deal. Okay, two block, have it jump up and down. Yep. <laughs> did, you, did you actually, did you know that in the old revised rule books, they actually had a, there's an ability where you, you could, when well, they were explaining trigger abilities, um, the example they used was two black target creature jumps up and down. So Rogue's Passage targets the Smiter, and we get in for ten. That's it. Yep. Uh, sorry, that, that's probably probably one of the most uh, random things ever. But I've, I've re I read that revised rule book cover to back, up uh, front, front to back many times over because I was, you know, a fourteen year old kid with, you know, magic's new and exciting and full of possibilities. And... Yeah. All right, we're we're getting off uh, off uh, of course a little bit here. Oh, I'm getting off course. You're smiling and nodding. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. So uh, out of sideboards, from you've got Michael Coleman's list. I do. Um, there are some pillars here that should definitely come in to stop those stop the one drops here. Um, I don't want to bring in Rakdos Charms too much. I don't want to bring in Rakdos Return. I don't want to bring an Appetite for Brains. Blood Artist might be okay. 
Um, but I think I'm just bringing, I'm just bringing in pillars here. Why is there blood rest in the sideboard? That is weird. I no. just... Some I don't think he thought maybe there wasn't room for them, but I wouldn't mind seeing Blood Artists in there instead of... If you're going to have it at all. So to be honest, I'm seeing a lot of these sideboards in these deck lists, where a lot of the mentality with sideboards is just extra cards that are good, they couldn't fit in their 60, right? as opposed to good situational cards. Well, I think that, that's going to differ a little bit with Ryan's sideboard, because she has extra Thalias... Good. Which I like because they're good in certain matchups, and in other matchups, they're not as good. Uh, two Celestia charms. I see four there. Um, four Celestia. Two Celestia oh, right. charms. Oh, right. changes. Okay. Two Prey of Palms, uh, and a Misers and Treat the Angels, which uh, was in the main deck at one point. Got switched out for uh, Sigarda. And uh, we have uh, two Rest in Peace. Two Oblivion Rings. So these are all two Rootborn Defenses. Rootborn Defenses, that's interesting. That's a, presumably against Wraths. Yeah, so is there any way we, we can, besides the Ophelia Celestia Charm, is the one way we can uh, um, populate, right? Yeah, it's just in there to make my dudes indestructible. Yeah, is that critical turn against the Acro decks? We're like, hey, you got, got, that, you got that Supreme Verdict? Cool. Yeah. It's not your... Uh, it's no, your card is no good here. Your your ace king is no good because I have pocket aces. Yeah, I mean Thalia does a lot of that same thing there to put that wrath a turn behind. Yeah, uh, I like to see at least three three Thalia's main in my end's list. I don't think four drive millions necessary. Like uh, I could see two or three. Okay. And then I like to get North Thalia in there because Thalia is so good for these lists because it keeps it's because the uh, especially from the play like they can't turn too far seek. Yeah. Which is huge. Uh, and so you want to get you like, and this match of Thalia is not that great, but um, yeah. And with Rancor being the only main deck spell, I mean, you can always cast a Rancor. Like Thalia is just pretty much perfect. Yeah. Um, so at least three Thalia's main will be what I want. Uh, I've even seen some of us run four, which I don't disagree with that either. Because you, the thing is, even though it's a legend and it'll kill each kill it, it can kill itself. Well, it's also only a two at one, so it can be killed by removal pretty quickly. Right. So, so it's okay to draw tons of those, so you have some, so you have some backup. Yeah, I mean, I've seen a lot of players have to spend their turn two pillar of flaming Thalia because they just need it off the board so they can make everything happen more profitably in the future. And you yeah. Throw another one down; it's it's back breaking. And uh, Zach Hill mentioned um, recently, and, and he he mentioned in, in the meeting that was a part of where Thalia got printed. His response was. Uh, Thalia punishes all the decks that want to be clever. Yeah, and and the, like that happened to me on Star City uh, Invitation we had here in Seattle a couple weeks ago, where uh, I was playing a four color reanimator deck. When I played against these blue white and green white aggro decks, I kept I kept crossing my fingers going, please no Thalia, please no Thalia, please no Thalia, and they have it turned two. I'm like, no. Yeah, it's just it's so huge. Yeah, turn that uh, turn four wrath. How about that turn? How about turn five wrath? Yeah, and, and interestingly, it gives you another turn to set up for. Uh, uh, Rootborn defenses, which is pretty hilarious. If you yeah. if they finally get to the fifth mana, say all right, now I can resolve my wrath, and you're like absolutely right after this Rootborn defenses resolves. <laughs> well, you got it. Bro. Right, so, spells here. so Michael's gonna be on the play. So I, again, if I'm Michael, I want to bring in Pillar of Flames to stop those one drop, keep those one drops, to turn two elephants off my off my back for sure. Michael's been playing a. a, a breed of this deck for quite some time, so I'm sure he sideboarded correctly and brought those pillars in. Yeah, okay, so Mike, looks like both players could be keeping here. He has a interesting hand. Do we not have, oh, we have, is that another Cavernous Souls, no other green source hand? Yeah. And I has, see Rogue's Passage, Allison's Pilgrim, Plains, Cavernous Souls. Thalia, Luxon, Smiter. And Silver Lily Paladin. Yeah. Okay, so we got turn one, Blood Crypt, both players keeping, and I see a turn, turn one, Grave Crawler. All right. So another so on okay. humans and there there we go we got a um, pilgrim okay so let's see if Michael has so the best play here is 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 pillar and then one more one drop uh, 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 that 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 oh that's tapped never mind okay it's three coming for three okay that's good all right so now now we we got turn two spider coming in no because once again no untapped green oh source. we have no green source we cannot play spider just here. have white sources we only have green so sources for humans. We, Silverblade, possibly? It could be Thalia Pilgrim. Pilgrim off the no, cavern and Thalia just to be mana efficient. Okay, there we go. And another Pilgrim. That's good. Good play. Um, that 
none of this means it wouldn't be a thorn in our side for quite some time here. Especially if they're, especially sure. if they're in multiples. Especially if they're in here in multiples, that's even worse. Alright, right, Knight of Infamy is as good for so the black have... red deck as Luxon Smiter is for the green white deck. Right. Yes. So do we have Spear here for Thelia, or do we have a Mecha Messenger? Let's see. Here's one, so one drop. Might go in the tank here. It's concerned. Got a few options, looks like. Alright, so our play is... Got to pay one more for that. Alright, there we go. And there, you, you, you did bring the pillars like we suggested. Yep. Good, good. And now... And see, even that screws him up probably a little bit. Now, they can play one, another one drop. Or a pillar, if that's more his speed. Okay, so Knight of Infamy comes in for three. Right, and quickly takes. And, and is there any reason for Grave Caller not to come in there? Don't you bring Grave Caller? No, because you don't want your Knight of Infamy getting chump blocked. Oh, right, because Exalted Trigger, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather not. Or, or you could just take the Grave Caller. I guess Absolutely. it doesn't matter. And then you can keep Knight back to block if you really want to. Yeah. You probably wouldn't, but it seems like, that seems like a small thing. It probably doesn't matter. It's probably safe. Okay. So, so I think that's a second rogue's passage. So if I'm correct, she still has that other rogue's passage in her hand. Interestingly, um, on on Channel Fireless last week, Matt Sperling wrote an article about some of the flavor misses, the hmm. things he hates from this the recent flavor cards he hates. Rogue's passage was one of them. And um, there's the silver blade paladin because he said he has. Then the, the, the caption below rogue's passage just read, "Right this way, I'm cool." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Could we, what do you think about it? How much sense does that make having a huge creature go through a passage design for something small? So Ryan pairs it, pairs with, it with a pilgrim and then attacks. Do you like that? Because now the Knight of Infamy can get back. It's true for, for three. For three. Uh, yeah. No. Keep. Yeah. Uh, um. That's probably okay. I guess that's all right because you can attack back. Oh, Dreadbore. Dreadbore oh. says, "Never mind any of that." Yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna bore Ryan to death here. And get him for six. six. Yep. And so Ryan drops to eight. Now Ryan's pretty far behind here. Looking not, looking not, for a green mana. Oh there we go. And there it is. Found it. And it looks like Michael has one or two cards left. I can't tell. Two looks cards. Like two cards. Can't see what they are this time though. So it's gotta be Smiter, right? Yeah, that's uh, her best chance to slow this down, even though Night of Infamy is still able to get in there. Uh, and I'm okay with keeping the you keep a pilgrim back to an extra blocker. Yeah. So there's Smiter. Okay, got two there. All right. Now we got the the mighty Smitey. Yep. So if Knight of Infamy comes in next turn by itself, you think both pilgrims jump in front? You have to, because you because you can't you don't want to go to five at yes. all. And even if you guys removal spell, like, clear one of them out. That's fine. You're not beating that card anyway. Alright, so tap guild gate. Oh, like, yeah, like I really, if you more like to play with, I'd advocate taking it there. Right. Chumping, chumping kind of feels like a losing proposition. Right. I like trying to just hope. Hopefully, you get there by killing it. Cross your fingers. Now, if you play some Knight of Infamy, it's way worse. Then, then we initiate chump mode. Right. You, you have to start throwing guys under yep. the bus because you need to buy yourself as much time as you can to get to that uh, Wolf Silver Silverheart in hand. Yeah. Silverheart can't. Yeah, Silverheart lets you stabilize here. So. Uh, all right, comes in by itself. All right, so let's see what Ryan does. Yeah, I, I like just hoping and praying. I think that's got to be your best. But like, there's too many ways to just you just blow it up, though. Maybe just blocking with one is okay because that that way you can just hope for, just hold on for Silverheart or tap the uh, Green Stars. That's right, because you have Silverheart in hand. So. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not lethal. I think next turn. You know what? I'm actually okay with the, with the just blocking with the Pilgrim here. Just too much can go wrong if you just if you just. Uh, one thing about blocking with one pilgrim is if he follows with a brimstone volley for the uh, five on smiter or your face, mm -hmm. it's pretty grotesque. Well, either way, you're pretty, either way, it's a brimstone bad. volley is beating you pretty hard here. Yeah, you lose the brimstone volley no matter what. So just plays if he doesn't have it. That's what I would do. Okay, we're going for the double block here. Okay, so okay, just too much. I just feels like there's too much that can go wrong here. But let's see what. Um, oh, we get the trade. Okay, so is there a, brim a brimstone volley now? Is just crushing because then the spider's removed and you have no and Ryan has no board. And then she literally has to draw a green. Sign and blood himself. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. Looks okay. like this double block might be working. Yeah. 
That's how it worked. That worked out as the best case scenario for him. Yep. There's a lot of ways you can you can go wrong. I guess you're saying, well, have it. And we're still in, she's still in the same more or less the same position. So blame Archangel. And that's uncastable with our current mana. Yep. And that, that, there's another rogue's passage and he's kind of shit. Oh, that mana is really awkward. Yeah, that is that's kind of a little frustrating. <laughs> having, yeah. having, Especially a two color deck. Having five lands in play and not being able to cast either of the cards in your hand that are different colors. Because Cavernous Souls seem to come at a real price in this deck. They hurt your, it looks like they're hurting consistency quite a bit. I think it's just because she's had to name humans both times and hasn't been able to save it for the later game. Nice move. Oof. Messenger, that's pretty good. Okay, so six. Send the Diagraph or the, uh, the Gravecrawler in here. Just for just for fun, just for mises. Well, she's gonna block. Yeah. But you can't afford to not block there. Right, so it's, it would seem to be you're just wasting your spinning your wheels doing that. I guess if you, if you have a pillar, it makes sense, or a searing spirit makes sense. Right. We're bringing both in. Okay. So four. Yep. Fucking that. Diagraph cool there. Going to four. four. Yep. And what do we have? Uh, follow no follow up. No follow up. Okay. Well, there's, there's a uh, Silver Blade Paladin. Can be cast off that cavern. So curiously, what do you what do you do what do you do there with, with the paladin? You pair it with the spider, obviously. You attack with the spider there. I don't think at four life you can afford to do that. Let's see. Okay, let's. Uh, yeah. Because he didn't play a removal spell or a burn spell last turn, so you just have to hope that he doesn't have it this turn either. Yep, yeah, we're pairing up. Because if you take two from the Gravecrawler, then you're dead whenever that messenger dies. And that's a bad position to be in. Yeah, because then, then all, all Michael's just sits there and go, hey, I, well, it's actually, a reason, it's actually reasonable because you can force him to have it and then just, uh, and then just get him a passage next turn, but that won't work. And there's a Hellrider. I'll do it. It'll be ball game. Yep. Alright, doesn't matter what you block. You are, uh, Ryan is dead. Yep, Ryan right. sees the running in the wall, scoops him up, we go to game three. Yeah, um, so I guess what I'm saying with Ryan's deck, I'm, I don't know how much of a fan I am of Cavernous Souls there in this deck. Um, it's because you already have Thalia and Smiter built in for uh, counter protection. How many cavern are we, are we running here? I'm looking at the list. And here, check the one. I'm not seeing oh, it so on either list. Well, that's odd. The, the, the list I have in front of me has uh, four grove, four temple garden, two rogues passes, two Gavney township, eight forests, and four plains. No, um, I, I'm told there's three in the deck. Three is even a bit much. Yeah, um, especially when you're a two-color deck. I don't mind main decking some of them, but that's a card I, I can I could find the third in the sideboard most of the time. Um, you know, actually, I, I played last season. I played Cavernous Souls with uh, in a Niapod deck. You both stay human most of the time, but yeah, I'd had way too many hands where it was like Cavernous Souls, Mountain, uh, Plains, and it's like Avacyn's Pilgrim or. Uh, uh, as Avacyn's Poker, Elvish Visionary, and, and it's just the most frustrating right. thing. Because you, you need it to cast, like, one of your early drops so that you can get going, but then it's not there when you need it to push through your important creatures to pass the counter spells. Right, so so they kill it, and then I have no green star system just sitting there right. spinning my wheel. So Cavern Souls comes at a cost. We, we saw it in this game, for sure. I Absolutely. Mean, you can't just willy-nilly run it and think it'll fix your mana problems, which usually you wouldn't expect a two-color deck to have mana problems, but when you have that many colorless, quote-unquote, colorless lands... And you have to balance it out against the deck. Like, look, the, the mana requirements in Ryan's deck are just... It doesn't, I mean, for a two-color deck, they're pretty strict. You have uh, Stranger Root Geist, you have... For its double green, you have Silver Blade Paladin, double white, Archangel, double white, Silver Heart, double green, Sigarda is double white, I believe? Yeah. Double white, single green. Yeah, so like those mana costs are pretty tight, are pretty pretty strict. 
Wait, wouldn't, wouldn't it be nice to have the uh, the filter lens from Eventide or Shadowmore in here? It'd be fantastic. So it looks like Ryan is looking at an opening hand of all forests. I see a forest, a forest, a thalia, a forest, and I think it's all white cords and a red cord. Oh, I don't think we can keep that. We keep? that oh, oh, we are keeping. We're okay. keeping. Maybe, Maybe there's, there's a green card in there I didn't see, but thalia, thalia. Oh god, no. gosh, thalia, thalia. Archangel Ranker, you can't keep this hand. I mean, no, that's not. That's so. Yeah. Yeah. Michael's deck is gonna is is in the prime position to 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 punish well, you. Well, Michael's no two drop. Yeah. This is this is painful. Well, he's giving Ryan time to Ca get out of it. Cast Predator Ooze. Yeah. If only we had Predator Ooze here. Not with these mana requirements, I wouldn't. But you, yeah, you. This is an example of a hand you just have to mulligan immediately. Yeah, you have no plays on turn one, two, or three without having to draw something. Leaves you with a pretty unremarkable hand. And when you're playing an aggro deck, you can't stumble like this. Right. And I'd imagine that despite some of the mana requirements that Ryan's deck mulligans reasonably well because of a, a fairly low end. There's a lot of sixes you could find that are better than this. Yeah. That's just, yeah, this is so, just too little too late. Pride mm -hmm. Militant, slap some rankers on it, because why not? Yeah. I mean, just double rankering them. There's no reason not to. Yeah, they'll both come back. We got, so we, oh, we have a Zendikar Forest, an Unhinged Forest, and an Unglued Forest. All the full Art Kingdom represented. So we, no we rankers. Pass. Are we bluffing something here? Um, what could you bluff? I have no idea. But so we're in four drop range for so Michael, which hell, is not good. You're hell, so if Michael plays a Hellrider, not rankering is huge there. Absolutely. Because now you can't kill. This looks like just a pillar. Yep. All right. And I'll wait for that comes in. Ryan dropped to 50. Yeah, Ryan's going to get a lot of help to get out of this. Uh, Diagraph Ghoul. And that will. Okay. So Shipping back. Nothing. Another white card. Oof. Rough. Yeah, this is. This is pretty rough. bad. Ryan on a three turn clock here. If Michael it's, does literally nothing, which is highly unlikely. That looks like a Hellrider. One aristocrat, so this is turn two, two o'clock now. Yep. Yep. So there's two. There is eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right at four, and this is all but over. Yep. Even with a uh, white land here, that's going to be ball game. That's it, pilgrim, but not good enough. Not close to good enough. Yeah, you might run really needed a mulligan that, because again, again, when we mentioned this earlier in a previous uh, previous commentary we did, how important it is to sculpt out what your hand's plan is. And, and again, if it starts with ifs or buts, you should probably mulligan. And that, that's an example of a hand you need to throw back immediately. Yep. There's the handshake. Right. And 